Hey guys, how do you make your machine learning experiments reproducible and how do you track them? In this video, we are going to see how you can do that using DVC. Well, DVC stands for Data Version Control and it's really useful when you want to version control your datasets and machine learning models. And this will help you tremendously if you want to make some reproducible experiments. So if you go to the dvc.org webpage, you can see that uh, the site says that DVC tracks ML models and datasets. And it's really similar to Git, but uh, one of the main features of this thing is that it doesn't uh, store the files themselves, but rather a metadata for each file because, um, yeah, the files for your models and your datasets might be very, very large. So what DVC does is uh, that it, use, it uses uh, some third party storage, for example, Amazon S3, uh, Microsoft Azure, Google Drive or Google Cloud storage. And in our example, we are going to use the local storage. So we will use our simple directory in our own file system. And uh, the nice thing about DVC is that it is Git compatible. So the commands that we are going to run are going to be, um, to, we are going to run the commands alongside Git and it makes your uh, whole pipeline or machine learning pipeline reproducible. So DVC is open source project and you can go and open the GitHub repo. It's really popular and it's very well maintained. Uh, and I'm going to show you how you can install, configure and use it in an example project that we are going to take a look at next. In order to understand how DVC works, we are going to play around with an example project. And this project contains all of the steps that are necessary to experiment and build a fully working machine learning project. So this one is going to be based on the Udemy courses dataset that is available on Kaggle. And this dataset is relatively new and it contains 3.682 courses in four different categories. And you can go ahead and look at the preview of the data right here. The aim of our little project is going to be predicting the number of subscribers that each course will have based on some of the other features, for example, the price of the course and the number of, let me go here, the number of lectures, the number of the level of the course, probably the content duration, the subject, and when the course was first published. The complete source code is already available on GitHub. I'm going to link the repo down into the description of this video. So let's start our little project. I'm going to start by creating a new directory for it. And I'm going to call it, uh, let's say, DVC or repro ML for reproducible ML. I'm going to enter here and I'm going to start the VS Code editor right into this directory. So this will open up a new project and I'm going to get the files from here from the GitHub repo. I'm going to take the flakeate, the git ignore the iSort, the pip files, and I'm going to open up Visual Studio Code. So these are the files. I'm going to edit this Python path right here and remove that. Now let's have a look at our project. And yeah, we have the all of the files. So I'm going to use pipenv to install all of the dependencies right here. And this will create a new virtual environment and start installing everything in the pip files. So let's have a look at what those files contain. So we have 
uh, black eye sort and flake kit for code formatting and sorting the imports and uh, uh, style guides. Next, we have the DVC, which is the dependency for the DVC itself. We have GDown because the dataset that I've shown you is already saved on my Google Drive and we're going to download it from there. We have Pandas and we have Scikit-Warn. So this is already installed and I'm going to create a folder right here, which is going to be called student predictor because we are going to predict the number of students or number of subscribers for each course. Let's have a look at an overview of each stage for our project and how DVC is going to help us there. I'm going to open up the docs on DVC and here we have each stage for our project and we have a complete pipeline for it. So the different steps are basically extracting data, splitting the data into training and test sets, extracting features, training a model and evaluating a model. So we are going to start with creating a step for creating a data set and we are going to split it. So we are going to merge these three steps. Then we're going to create the features, train a model and evaluate the model. So I'm going to start by creating a new file called create dataset.py and here I'm going to select no it didn't find it I'm going to restart the code editor and now we have the correct environment, so this one it is. And here I'm going to start by importing some libraries. So we're going to need gdown and we're going to need numpy and pandas. Uh, all right. Next, we need train test split from scikit-learn. Okay, and next we need a config file. So this config file is going to contain most of the paths for our data set. And I'm going to create something like this. I'm going to use patlib, which is a standard Python module. And I'm going to create a class config. I'm going to set a random seed right here. And I'm going to create a path to a folder called assets. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new folder right here, which we are going to call assets. And in this folder, we are going to store all of the data files that we are going to need for DVC, including the trained models. So right here, we're going to create uh, folders called data features models, and we are going to save some metrics that we are going to use for comparing our different experiments. So reproducibility and uh, tracking experiments are going to happen right here in this folder with DVC. All right, next we need an original dataset file path. And here I'm going to use the assets path, original dataset. And this will download it right here. So this will be the path to the CSV file that is available on Kaggle. Next, I'm going to create a dataset path. Here we'll have the train and test splits. Next, we have the features path. 
again in the assets, models path. And finally, we'll have a matrix file path, which will be a JSON file that contains different metrics based on the evaluation of our model. So this is the complete config file, and we are going to use each and every one of those constants along uh, the way. So first I'm going to start by seeding the random number generator. Uh, in NumPy and for that I'm going to need to import the config that we've just created. And I'm going to use the random seed right here. Next, I'm going to make the directory for the original data set. And this will go ahead and create the folder assets path original data set. Next, I'm going to create the dataset path as well. All right, so if I open up the terminal right here, and this automatically creates or uses this virtual environment, and I'm going to run Python student predictor create data set and this should run just fine and in our assets directory you can see that we have those two folders already so this is uh, already working and I'm going to close up this panel next I'm going to copy and paste uh, the gdown link So this will basically show the way to my Google Drive, which you can also use and download the file from there. And I'm going to store this to the original dataset file path. All right, so this should be okay. Next, I'm going to read the file using pandas. So this is something All right Original data hmm. The autocomplete isn't working. Oh, it's working now Next, I'm going to split the data into trace, uh, train and test. I'm going to pass in the original data set. I want to save 20% of the data for testing. And I'm going to pass in a random state from the config random seed file. Okay. And finally, I want to save the results to the dataset path train.csv and I don't want to save the index and I'm going to do the same thing for the test file Okay, so if I run the terminal again, so if I do Python student predictor create dataset, 
you can see that we are downloading the file and in the assets directory we have the udemy courses csv file and then in the data directory we have the train and test so we have the create data sets step and the next step is to create some features so i'm going to create a new file called create features or extract features if you like you might call it that so here i'm going to again start with a couple of imports i'm going to use the date from date time i'm going to import pandas and I'm going to import config, uh, the config file right here. First, I'm going to make sure that the folders for the features is created. I'm going to save it. Next, I'm going to read the train DF from the files that we've just created. That set path, so we have the train CSV and I'm going to read the test CSV. All right, next I'm going to write a function called extract features and this one will accept uh, data frame and here we're going to extract all of the features for this data frame and we need this function because we have a training and testing data frames and for each one we are going to do basically the same thing so what we are going to extract right here and for our model I'm going to use the number of lectures the content duration the price and the days since the course has been published and i'm going to do some slight feature engineering to uh, calculate or create this feature based on the published timestamp so i'm going to show you how you can do that so first i'm going to take the published timestamp and convert that to date time using pandas and just take the date from this. Next, I'm going to create the feature called days since published. And this will take the date from the daytime library. And I'm going to call the today function. And I'm going to subtract the published timestamp from that and I'm going to just calculate the days. So we are going to return the number of lectures, the price, days since published, content, duration. And of course, in a real world example, you might want to do a lot more feature engineering, but the purpose of this demo is just to show you how you can build a full pipeline using DVC. We are not going to dive any deeper into feature extraction or feature engineering. And we are going to create the training features using the extract features function. The autocomplete isn't working today. and the test features next i'm going to save the train features to a csv file train dot underscore features dot csv and I don't want to store the index for those. Next for the test features. All right. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing for the labels. So we have the number of subscribers. 
as our labels or the number that we want to predict. And I'm going to save those again into the features path train underscore labels dot CSV. And I'm going to do the same thing for the test labels. So let's check if this step is also working. So we have the features directory and here we have the training features which is this data frame and we have for example the training labels now that we have the features we can go and train a simple model and for this first experiment we are going to start with something really simple we are going to use the good old linear regression model and I'm going to create a new file called trainmodel.py. Here I'm going to import Pico because we are going to use that to serialize our model. I'm going to import pandas and I'm going to import linear regression from skwern. I'm also going to import the config. So first we are going to create the models path if it doesn't exist already. Next I'm going to read the features path, uh, the training features and the training labels. train labels so both of those csv files are now loaded and i'm going to create a linear regression model i'm going to fit the x train and y train but here i want to convert this to a numpy array and uh, basically add another dimension to it so skwarn doesn't complain and then next i'm going to use pico to store the model and i want to open this file for writing a binary file so this should be this step and if I open up a terminal again and run the Python file called train model, this should store this pico file into our models directory. The final step of our first experiment is to create an evaluation step so we know how good our model is doing. I'm going to create a new file called evaluate model.py right here. I'm going to close this and close this. Here I'm going to import JSON, import pico, import pandas, and I'm going to take the mean squared error from skwarn. And finally, I'm going to import the config. All right, so I'm going to start by reading the test features. And the test labels. 
Next, I'm going to read the model by opening. Sorry, I run this. I don't know how. Let me close this. And models path. I'm going to load the model. And I want to open this for read ink binary file. All right. So next we are going to calculate the R squared for our regression model. And I'm going to pass in the X test and Y test. So this will be the first metric that we're going to track. And next, I'm going to take the predictions from our model. And I'm going to use those predictions to calculate the root mean squared error. And to do that, I'm going to use mat.square root. And I'm going to import mat right here. So we are going to use the mean squared error. So to this, I'm going to pass in the Y test and Y pred. So now that we have both of those metrics, I'm going to open up a file, which are go, which is going to contain all of the metrics that we are interested in. And of course, this will be our JSON file. And I'm going to save a dictionary for R squared and root mean squared error. And I'm going to save this into the output file. So if I start up a terminal again, So, and I've misplaced a parenthesis right here. So if I go ahead and do this and run this, we are going to have our little metrics file. So we have our first experiment complete and you can clearly see that this experiment didn't do that great. But this is our baseline model, so it is a good time to store our results. And I'm going to go to the directory of our project, initialize git. And I'm going to commit this. Uh, let me just add everything. First, linear regression experiment. All right, so I have committed everything. And... Next, I want to start by initializing DVC, adding a remote, and I'm going to show you how you can make your experiments reproducible and track some metrics. So let's initialize DVC with DVC init. And in order to work, DVC also requires a remote, a place to store the files themselves. And DVC is capable of storing the files in a variety of locations, but I'm going to use my local machine for now. I'm going to store those into temp DVC dash storage. And you can call this whatever you like. So we have a local remote right now. And next I'm going to disable the analytics. So if you open up the editor, you can see that now you have a .dvc directory and it, in this one you have the remote, which is currently the working or the current one, which points to this local remote and we have the analytics turned off. To make our experiments reproducible, we are going to use another command that dvc provides and it's dvc run. So for this one to work, I'm going to delete 
pretty much everything right here. Okay. And I'm going to copy and paste my git ignore file for this specific directory. So this will basically ignore all of the folders that we are just creating. And Next, we are going to use DVC to make our create dataset step reproducible. And to do that, I'm going to run DVC run F assets data DVC. So this will output this file from this running of the step. I'm going to pass in the student predictor create dataset dot pi as a dependency to this script and I'm going to say that we are outputting our data into assets data and finally I'm going to run the command itself so I'm going to use python student predictor create date set and it says that it's running this command the downloading is happening and we are basically having a new file, which are going to see right here. We have the data.dvc file. And if I open this, you can see that the command that we run is Python student predictor create date set. We have the dependencies, which is just the script itself. And the path, the output is actually cached. And we have the assets data folder right here all right so next we are going to do the same thing for the features and i'm going to run dvc run dash f assets features dot dvc and this will have a dependency of student predictor create features and another dependency, which is going to be the data in the assets folder. So this will depend on the previous step. And this will output assets, features. And finally, we are going to run the script itself, create features. So this is running the command and we should have the features right here. Yeah, we have them. All right, next, we are going to train our model. And this will be really similar. We're going to create a file called models DVC. This will depend on student predictor train model and depend on assets features. And this will output assets models. And we are going to create this using the train model script. So we now should have the models folder. We have the meta file, which explains the dependencies. And we are ready for the one final step, which is going to be storing the evaluation metrics of our model. And this will be evaluate.dvc file. This depends on the evaluate model script and on the features. It also depends on the models. So we should have those. And it outputs a thing called metrics file, which is going to be just this JSON file that we have. And JSON and regular text file are supported by DVC. So I'm going to run the script. And now we have pretty much everything right here, including this metrics.json file. So this pretty much is the complete working uh, project. So I'm going to go ahead and 
complete uh, and commit everything complete DVC linear regression experiment and I'm going to tag this as our experiment so if I run now this DVC matrix show dash T you can see that we have a working tree version of the matrix file and we have an ever experiment version which is the tact version of this repo all right so our first experiment is fully dvc compatible it runs great and it already is showing some metrics that we've stored previously but again those metrics are quite crappy so let's go ahead and use another model which we are going to pick right here so this will be well let's use a random forest model random forest models are really popular random forest regressor and you are basically going to change your files I'm going to specify a number of estimators and the maximum depth for the each tree and I'm going to specify a random state right here so this is pretty much a standard way that you might want to uh, take when you're experimenting with something new and here you can basically do this so this command will go ahead check the differences in each uh, step of the pipeline and run those for you in our example we've changed the model and based on that the dvc will be smart enough to know that it should also run the evaluation script so the training and the evaluation of our model will be reproduced and it says that yeah the model's dvc has changed the train model file has changed the evaluate dvc has changed and it says that evaluate model is saving the metrics JSON, but it doesn't use cache, which is great. And we have two new changes right here. So I'm going to add those to Git. And I'm going to save this as such. And I'm going to create a tag RF experiment. Alright, so now we have both of those tags and if I run DVC metrics show dash T you can see that we have the different metrics that we've chose to store. We have the linear regression experiment right here and we have the random forest experiment right here. So you can see that our random forest is actually performing much much better. It's not great, but uh, for the purposes of this demo, this will be just enough. So this is a really simple way to make reproducible steps in DVC and DVC is smart enough to know which parts of the pipeline to rerun. So for example, if you change your data set, it might rerun the whole pipeline. But in our case, we just changed the model. So it rerun the training model script and then the evaluation script and stored the results. And we just tagged everything using Git. And DVC is smart enough to know that you that it goes to the different tags based on this uh, option and compares the experiments. Right. You can use tags and you can use branches and different strategies to compare your different outputs or metrics from your experiments using DVC. So this is pretty much everything that I'm going to show you at least in this video. Uh, go ahead and try DVC out for yourself. 
and I think that it's a really neat tool to store your files for models and datasets and apply some version control on top of those. Of course, I haven't shown you the full power of DVC, but uh, I think that the reproducibility and the comparison of metrics is really great feature that I personally use very much or might use in practice. So thanks for watching guys. Please like this, share, subscribe to this channel and I'm going to link the text version of the tutorial down into the description. Thanks for watching. Bye.